With so many exciting new running shoes dropping in 2024, we've had to break down this year's must-have running shoe video into two parts. So we've already uploaded part one, so what I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description below in case you haven't seen it and you'd like to check it out. But back to today's video, and we are gonna give you the lowdown on some really cool looking road and trail running shoes from Hoka, New Balance. We've also got shoes from Nike, Brooks, and Puma to look at. So let's get stuck into the video and tell you all about the latest and greatest running shoes that are gonna be hitting the shelves in 2024. Welcome back folks, hope you are all fit and running strong and you've had a great start to the new year. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So we're gonna dive straight in and get stuck into the first shoe and it happens to be a, a neutral running shoe from the guys at New Balance, but it's also an update to one of my favorite lightweight daily trainers of all time, the Fuel Cell Rebel. The Rebel V2s were one of my favorite road running shoes, super lightweight, a very comfortable, great fitting up and a really well-balanced, responsive midsole. Uh, the V3s were still good, maybe not as good for me as the V2s, but I still enjoyed running in them. However, this time round, we are seeing some massive updates for the Rebel model, and it looks like a very different shoe this time round. So let's give you guys some stats. Like a lot of the new shoes releasing this year, the New Balance Rebel V4 is pretty much a brand new shoe from the ground up. So we've got a completely different outsole design. You get a deeper level of cushioning in that midsole construction, and we've got a redesigned Phantom Fit upper. The shoe is due to release around March time, and it's gonna retail for $140 in the US, so that should make it around about £135 here in the UK. Weight-wise, we are still seeing a super lightweight daily trainer with a men's US 9.5 tipping the scales at only 215 grams or 7.58 ounces. New Balance have added 5 mil of the soft stuff to the midsole so you now get a stack height of 33 mil at the heel and 27 mil under your forefoot giving the Rebel V4 a 6 mil heel offset. I'm glad to say it is still a non-plated training shoe and actually this time round the midsole is constructed from a, a new blend of P an EVA foam and you can see from the pictures that we've still got that sort of angular geometry design going on on the midsole that we're seeing in a lot of the new shoes coming out in New Balance this year. As far as the upper goes we have got a new lighter phantom fit design that actually looks very similar to what New Balance are using on their new Super Comp Elite V4. They're utilizing this lightweight almost transparent engineered mesh that's got plenty of overlays and underlays to give that upper some some substance and some structure in the right places while remaining comfortable and highly breathable. My fingers are tightly crossed for this one because I really was a big fan of the last two models and it really has gone through a big update. And like we're seeing with a lot of shoes, New Balance have added quite a bit more cushioning to that midsole. So I really hope it doesn't compromise that great, lightweight, well-balanced and, and exciting and responsive underfoot feel you got from the Rebel V2 and V3. Moving on, and it is trail running shoes up next, and the first ones come from the guys at Hoka. And this is a very interesting looking shoe indeed, and I really need to test these out this year. So it is their brand new Tecton X3. Uh, this is gonna be their sort of elite ultra distant shoe in 2024, and it was actually a prototype of this very shoe that helped superstar trail runner Jim Wormsley take victory at UTMB last year. We are seeing significant changes again when we compare the new Tecton X3 against the previous version. But I'd say the most noticeable change comes in the form of the new upper design. So Hoka have uh, chosen to stick with the same super lightweight, very durable Kevlar fiber reinforced textile for the construction. But we have the addition of a, a knitted collar that extends from the tongue around the ankle to try and help keep debris out of the shoe. As far as the midsole goes, we are seeing some big changes here as well. So the new Tecton X is gonna come with two layers of supercritical Piba foam instead of the one layer that you got in the previous version. You also now get a stack height of 40 mil on the heel and 35 mil under the forefoot, giving the shoe a heel offset of five millimeters. 
worked into that midsole construction is a very similar dual parallel carbon plate setup that we got in the previous Tecton X2. However, Hoka have worked in these sort of rear lateral wings to try and help when it comes to stability with that deeper level of cushioning in the midsole when you're running on uneven and rough ground. The outsole remains Vibra Mega Grip light base, but we do have a redesigned traction lug design. So this now features little micro lugs on the side of the main lugs themselves to try and improve levels of traction. Uh, the shoe is due to release in July this year. Hasn't been confirmed by Hoka yet, but we believe it's gonna be July. So there is a bit of waiting time to get your hands on this one. But hopefully you are sitting down right at this moment in time because the new Tecton X3 from Hoka is gonna retail for a whopping $275. Sticking with trail running shoes for now, and it is an update from the guys at Nike, and it is their new Zigamma 2. Now, it is a well-known fact here at the channel that over the years, I have been pretty disappointed with some of the running products coming out of Nike's trail running department, including my most disappointing and overhyped shoe of 2023, the Nike Ultrafly. I did test and review the original Zigamma on the channel and there's actually a few features that I really, really liked about the shoe. So the upper fitted my foot like a glove. I found it very comfortable to run in. I also liked the level of cushioning that I got from the dual compound midsole setup. However, when I tested the shoe on some more technical trails in the mountains of Chamonix, I did find that they ran pretty unstable to the point where I actually tweaked my ankle several times on one run. So hopefully Nike have addressed these few stability issues with the new version. It's due to release in May 2024 at a price point of $160 or around about £145 here in the UK. Weight-wise, it's going to tip the scales at 320 grams or 11.29 ounces in a men's US 10. Uh, the midsole is going to have a stack height of 36 mil at the heel and 32 mil under the forefoot, giving you a pretty low four mil heel offset. And probably the biggest update is going to be the fact that the Zigamma 2 is going to come clad with Vibram Mega Grip rubber on its four millimeter lugged outsole. Brooks Running looks to have some pretty exciting trails offerings this year uh, what with the launch of a new model the catamount agile and an update to the standard catamount the catamount 3 the agile looks like it's going to be a nice lightweight responsive fast sort of trail racer uh, and it comes with a plated dna flash v2 midsole setup which is quite similar to the midsole setup that you get on their hyperion elite v4 road shoe which actually featured in part one of our must-have shoes of 2024 the upper design looks pretty lightweight and stripped back and actually really reminds me of the upper that you get on Hoka's Zinal 2 with the way it comes up quite high around the ankle and is nicely fitted. And I was a big fan of that Zinal 2 upper because it fitted my foot shape like a glove. You get a decent lug depth of 4.5 mil on the outsole and the shoe is due to release sometime around March this year. This is definitely a brick shoe that I, I'm excited to get on my feet and give them a thorough testing on the trails of Cornwall. Moving on to the updated Catamount 3, which is actually just released here in the UK. It retails for £160 and it tips the scales at 263 grams or 9.4 ounces. It comes with a new DNA flash midsole construction with a 6mm heel offset and housed within that midsole is actually a propulsion plate for uphill efficiency efficiency just to create a nice lightweight and responsive trail shoe. We should have a pair in for testing soon so keep your eyes peeled for a first impressions video dropping on the channel. Back to road running for the last shoe and it actually comes from a brand that hasn't featured on Run For Adventure before. So it is the new plated road racer from Puma, the Fast R Nitro Elite 2. Now I think you've got to agree with me, this is a very interesting looking running shoe with that kind of split midsole setup and it actually comes with new Nitro Elite foam compound in that midsole and that carries out throughout the shoe rather than in the previous version where it had an EVA heel section. The plate has also been stiffened and you can see by the pictures that it's been extended beyond the toe of the shoe. This is supposed to help with sort of forward propulsion in your running motion. Uh, I've got to be honest, I think it looks a little bit strange and it's going to be really interesting to 
give the shoe a run and to test it out and to see if it actually works. The Fast R Nitro Elite V2 comes with a, a nice lightweight knitted upper design to keep you nice and secure, nice and locked in when you're running quickly on race day while remaining highly breathable. And then finishing up, the outsole is clad in sticky Puma Grip rubber. I'm not sure what they're going to retail for at the moment, but as far as the weight goes, they tip the scales at 240 grams or 8.4 ounces. They're going to have a stack height of 40 mil at the heel and 32 mil under your forefoot, giving you an 8 mil heel offset. And they are due to release soon, uh, February 2024. I think it's about time we had a pair of Puma running shoes on the channel, so maybe these will be the first ones. So there you have it, folks, some more new and exciting running shoes shoes to look out for this year. It is definitely going to be a busy couple of months testing out shoes, whether it be on the roads or the trails of Cornwall. I've actually got the new Mud Talon from Innovate winging its way over to Run for Adventure HQ for testing. Uh, really looking forward to trying the shoe out. It's going to be the first shoe from the brand to carry their new brand in and I'm excited to test them out on some nice muddy UK winter trails very soon. Really hope you enjoyed the video and you like seeing some of the new updates and models heading in our way don't forget if you did enjoy it to like comment share and subscribe if you haven't already uh, it only takes a second to do just by clicking on that little red box down there in the corner and it is completely free but it really is a big help to the channel while you're there don't forget to hit that bell icon as well because then you'll be notified when we upload any new exciting running content but for now guys thanks for watching thanks for supporting the channel it really is appreciated and as always stay safe and keep on running we have got a completely different outsole design. We've got a deeper level of... A deep, blah, 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 blah. With a men's US 9.5 tipping the scales at only 215 grams or 700... 700? No. So Hoka have stuck with the same lightweight, super durable, Kevlar reinforced... Uh, <laughs> worked into that midsole construction. is a very similar... Uh, dual parallel carbon... And I'd say the most noticeable change is coming in the form of the new upper design. So Hoka have chosen... <laughs>